In this video, we're going to learn about loops in C Sharp. Loops are an integral part of programming and something you need to be very familiar with since you won't be using them all the time. We're going to cover four types of loops that you can use depending on the situation. Let's begin! Okay, so first of all, you know when code runs, it runs from top to bottom. So first this instruction runs, and this one until the end of the code block. Now loops let you run code inside of a code block multiple times. Here we're going to cover four types of loops. While, do while, for, and for each. We're also going to cover the two keywords related to loops, continue and break. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventure. Bad Adventure is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventure.com. Thank you to the Patreon sponsor and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So let's start off with the simplest to understand which is the while loop. Okay, so here we are in an empty script. And first we write the keyword while and then we input our condition inside parentheses, and then we have our code block. So this is the basic definition of a while loop. And for testing, before we do, let's define an int variable and start off at zero. And then we're going to run the code inside of this code block whilst i is under three. And inside of our code block, we're going to do i++. So while the i variable is under three, we're going to run the code in here, which is going to increment our i variable. Then let's just add a simple log just to see what's going on inside. So a debug log on the value of i. All right, so let's test. So here we are and yep, you can see in our console that we have our code block being executed three times. We're doing the log after we increment our i variable. So in here, first we have a one, then we have a two, then we have a three, and then we break out of our loop because the next time that it runs, our i will be at three and three is not under three, so it breaks out. Now, for example, if instead of starting at zero, let's say we start off at five and we test, and there it is, the loop code block doesn't run at all since it tests for the condition before it runs. All right, so this is the while loop. It has a condition and it does something whilst that condition is true. Now, the next type of loop is the do while. This is extremely similar with one very key difference. The difference is that the condition is tested after the loop runs. So first we write the keyword do, then we add our code block, and then we write while and our condition. So let's try doing the same thing, so i under 3, and in here let's do i++ plus plus and the debug log. And now for testing, let's leave the i at 5 as we did previously. And if you remember, when we did that with the while loop, we did not get anything since our code block did not run at all since it first tests for the condition and five is not under three, so it did not run this not even once. However, in a do while loop, that condition is only tested at the end. So if we run this code, and if there it is, we can see that our loop code ran once. This is the key difference between while and do while. On the while, you test the condition before the code block runs, and on the do while, you test the condition after the code block runs. So if you have some code that you want to run at least once and then perhaps loop through it, then the do while might be useful in that scenario. So here you have the first two types of loops. You have the while loop and the do while. Now one thing you have to be very careful when using whiles or do whiles is you need to write your condition very carefully. Here for example on the while, if we start off at zero and I don't increase this, then this condition here will remain true forever since I will always be zero. So if we run this code, then this condition will be true forever, so our game won't be stuck running this code block over and over again, and we'll have to forcefully close it. So when working with whiles and do whiles, you have to be very careful not to create some endless loops. Now the next loop type helps prevent that from happening, and it's the loop type that I tend to use the most. I'm talking about the for loops. At first they might seem confusing, but they're actually quite simple. So you start off by writing the for keyword, then you open the parentheses, and in here you have actually three code blocks separated by a semicolon. Now the first one is the initializer, which is run only once as this line executes. So here normally you want to initialize a certain iterator variable. 
So by normal convention, you name it i for iterator or index, and you normally want to use an int. So you define the variable in here and you initialize. So usually set it to zero. Then you have the semicolon and you have the second block. Now the second block is our condition. This is tested every time just before the loop runs. So the same behavior as the while. So in here, let's say i under three, then another semicolon. And finally, we have the last code block, which runs after the loop runs. So normally here you increment your iterator variable. So normally just something like i plus plus. So this is how the for loop sort of helps you avoid endless loops that you might get with whiles and do whiles. In here, you have to write the last code block. So most of the times you don't forget to increment your iterator. Although obviously you can still end up with an infinite loop if you do something like i minus minus or simply mess around with different variable. Okay, so let's look at the for loop in action and really it should work pretty much the same as our while loop. So in here, let's just do a debug log on our i variable. Let's see. And if there it is, we have 0, 1, 2. So the first time that the code block runs, we're going to have our i initialized to 0. So it runs and we print out a 0. Then after the loop code block runs, we're going to increment our iterator variable. And after doing that, then we test out the condition. So at that point, we have i equals 1, which is still under 3. So we run it again. Then we run this again, then test it again, run, and so on. So that's how we end up with 0, 1, 2. So the for loop tests for the condition before it runs the code block, much like the while and not like the do while. Now over here on the first statement, you can actually define more than one variable. So you can define an int i equals zero and a j equals five, something like that. And you can also define it of any type. So you can define it of something like a float, but normally for most scenarios, you'll still just use just one iterator, make it an int and name it i. And on the third statement, you can also do more than just increment a single amount. So you can do, for example, plus equals two. So this will increase the iterator by two every time it runs the code block. And you can also do i minus minus or whatever statement you wish to run at the end of each loop. For loops are great for iterating through an array. So here, for example, let's define an array. All right, so I've defined an array of characters, a, b, c, d, e. And we can use a for to cycle through it. So we define our iterator, start off at zero. Then we go once the iterator is under the array dot length and we increase the iterator. So this will cycle through the entire array. So here we can print out the index and then print out the char array on that index. So let's see. And if there it is, we have our zero A, one B, C, D, E, and so on. So here, for example, let's look at what happens when you do plus equals two. So we increase the iterator by two every time and let's see. And yep, here we have our log skipping over every other character. So it skips the one and the three. Now, speaking of arrays, we have the last type of loop, which is the for each loop. This one is great for easily cycling through a list or array. So first we write the keyword for each, and then we define our iterator element. So let's define enough type char to go through our array. So a char C. Then we use the keyword in, and then the list or array or collection that we want to cycle through. So here, let's cycle through our char array. And that's pretty much it. So this will cycle through our array, and for each time it runs, we're going to have a different element assigned to this variable. So here we can do a simple debug log on our char array. And let's test. And yep, there you go, we have all of our characters. So if you don't need the index, then the for each is a more simplified way of cycling through an array. The for each works with all collections. So for example, it works on this array. It also works on a list or queue or really just about any collection. If you want to go more advanced, you can also make your own classes support for each. You just need to implement two interfaces. So one is the I enumerable and you also need to implement I enumerator. However, one thing you cannot do inside of a for each is modify the actual list. So here, let's convert this from an array into a list. And now here, as we're cycling through, let's do a log and then let's do char array dot remove. Let's remove this character. And if we run this, yep, there it is, we get an error. So we cannot modify our collection whilst in the middle of a for each. So if you want to go through a list or collection and remove some elements, then one approach you can do is use the normal for 
And let's say we want to remove the character or an index one. So we do a simple if, if the index equals one, then let's go into the char list and remove at index one. So this does not work inside of a for each, but it does work inside of four. However, if we run like this, here you can see that we have another issue. You can see that the indexes are indeed working. So we went from zero, one, two, three. However, we went from A to B to D to E. So essentially we skipped over C, even though all we wanted was to actually remove B. So the reason why that happened is because as we remove the character on index one, all of the other elements after that one were relocated back on the list. So as B was removed, C went into index one, but then we ran our iterator statement and doing so increased the iterator by one, which means that by doing that, we end up skipping the element that was actually relocated. So essentially, if you do this, if you remove at something, you gotta keep in mind that the iterator will still run. So instead of testing for an index, let's remove if we find the B character. And in order to prevent it from skipping over something, after we remove, then let's go backwards on our iterator. Okay, so now let's test. And yep, there you go. Now it correctly went through all the elements. So first we go into the A, then we go into the B, which is on index one. And since it's the B, we're going to remove it from the list. But then in order to not skip the C, which gets relocated back into one, then we simply go backwards and we test the index one again. So again, if you're removing elements while cycling through a list, pay very close attention to what your code is actually doing. Now, another thing you can do with loops is to skip to the next element or break out of the loop. So here, for example, on our for each, we're cycling through all of our characters, okay? And before we do our log, let's test if this character equals the B character. So if it is the B character, then we want to skip it. And the way we can do that is by using the continue keyword. So this will skip the rest of the code log. So essentially it will skip our debug log and go straight on to the next character. So let's see. And if there it is, we have A, C, D, E. So we essentially skipped over B. For example, I normally use continue when cycling through a list of enemies in order to skip the enemies that are either too far or dead already. And continue works on all other loop types. So you can use continue on a while, on a do, or on a for. Another thing you can do is break out of a loop. So here, instead of skipping by using continue, we can instead use the keyword break. And now if you run, and if there it is, we just have the A character. So essentially, as soon as we hit the B character, we broke out of our loop and continued the code after that. So here we saw B, then we hit break. So that means we did not run this code and went straight down here. And again, break works on all other loop types. Now, one more important thing to know is nested loops. So this is when you have a loop inside of another loop, so for example, you have a four inside of a four. So for example, this is how you would cycle through some sort of grid. So the first four increments the X and goes until the width. And then the second inner loop increments the Y and goes until the height. Now, one important thing to know is what happens here when using break. So here, if the X equals one, then we're going to break out. Let's see. And there it is. Essentially, we only run the code when the X is zero. So as soon as it becomes one, it breaks out. So it doesn't run our second loop at all. However, if instead of breaking here, if we break inside of our nested loop, so let's say when I equals one. And yep, you can see that the X equals one also ran. So here we are breaking out of this loop, but do not break out of that loop. So the break only breaks from the loop that it's actually in. It does not break any other loops above it. All right, so here we looked at loops in C Sharp. We saw four different types, while, do while, for, and for each. They each work differently, which makes the best loop to use depend on your exact situation. And we also covered how we can skip elements in a loop or break out of a loop earlier. So with this knowledge, you now know one of the core fundamentals of program. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unity code monkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more unity and C sharp tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.